Hey Beaconville, my name is Javier Rivas. I'm the university photographer and videographer here at UMass Boston. As many of you may know, June is Pride Month, so we've decided to sit down here with Coach Dags and have a conversation about it. Coach? Um, so I'm Natalia Ardagna. I am the head softball coach here, and I've been here for 17 years. What does Pride mean to you? I think Pride is just, you know, a celebration of, you know, not only the LGBTQ um, community, but just also anybody that, you know, identifies as queer. Just kind of, you know, being inclusive and celebrating all of those things, um, you know, and just kind of shedding light to a group of people that may sometimes feel like they may be in the dark. So as uh, somebody who identifies as part of uh, the LBGTQ plus community, um, are, can you share your coming out experience? I think for me, the coming out experience, like there's a lot of different ways that um, I think queer people kind of go through like the quote unquote coming out experience. And sometimes as someone who identifies, um, you know, in the LGBTQ community, I think you're constantly coming out. And so I think for me, you know, it, it started when I came out after college, but you know, I think people have a perception of what a gay person should look like or what a lesbian should look like. And so I think if sometimes I don't fit that mold, I have to then come out again because people would just assume that I'm, you know, straight or I have a sexual thing. And so I think it really just kind of depends on the situation. You know, you have to feel comfortable, you have to be able to feel safe, you have to be able to want to share a part of your life that is extremely important and part of how you self-identify. And so for me, you know, it's just a continual coming out, you know, and, and I think that's something that maybe people in the heterosexual community don't really understand is that you have to, you know, you're constantly having to explain who you are um, because it's just assumed that you would be heterosexual. How, how do we create these environments for, for say, your student athletes to, to feel included, um, whether they're part of the queer community or not? Um, how, how do you provide the safe space as a coach? I think just for me specifically, I feel like I do that best when I'm myself. And getting the student athletes to see who I am as a person, um, you know, let them understand a little bit about who I am as a wife and who I am as a mother. Um, so, you know, I think that humanizes things so that it doesn't seem so daunting, you know, like, oh, okay, you know, this person can just be like the quote unquote norm, but still live in the queer community. I think for us as a team and as a group, you know, we try to really be mindful of um, how the other person is feeling and trying to look at ourselves as a group of people and just try to be understanding and understand that, you know, there may be things going on behind the scenes that you don't see on the surface and let's just try to give everyone a little bit of grace and understand like, hey, they may be going through something that you may not know about. And so I think that's part of how we try to create such an inclusive environment, but I also think it's important that, you know, we're, we're learning from our mistakes, you know, if someone does make a mistake or there is judgments that's passed, um, you know, we try to say like, hey, okay, was that really the best decision? Was that really the best way to handle it? Do we feel like we made everyone feel safe? And if we don't, you know, we try to figure out a way that we can redirect it and learn from it. Because, you know, I'm constantly learning, even having been a coach for 17 years, I'm constantly learning and developing and changing as a coach. And I feel like, you know, I need to continue to do that to create inclusive environments for people who can marginalized. Have you seen progress? Yeah, I've seen so much progress. I think the the biggest thing is that like, you know, even just having this video, the fact that we're creating this content where we're, you know, bringing light to the fact that I am part of the queer community, I feel like that is a huge amount of progress. I mean, I can't imagine that, you know, my coach or a coach 20 years ago would sit down and have this conversation and talk about, you know, their gayness. And so I think, you know, just seeing the progression of that, seeing the inclusivity, seeing, you know, having months like June and and Pride Month and celebrating and, and having, you know, whole communities and campuses come together just to bring light to this, I feel like that is a huge amount of progress. Um, I think student athletes these days, I think, you know, they have the opportunity to be who they want to be and I think they need to be able to do their due diligence to find the right environment. Um, you know, I think there are roadblocks 
for anyone in a marginalized community. And I think that, you know, as someone who may be questioning or maybe feeling that way, you want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence to make sure that you're going to put yourself in the right environment to be successful. What are ways that you think that we can continue to uh, fight against homophobia, transpho uh, transphobia um, in that community, whether it be um, on campuses or just in, in the professional athletic world? Just um, what are ways that you think that we should continue to fight that? I think just, you know, and it's really hard, but I think when you hear people speak in a way that is not supportive of the queer community, I feel like just being able to be like, hey, that's not okay. Um, and I think that's the first step because if more people, regardless of if you are a part of the queer community or you consider yourself an ally or even if you're just existing, I feel like, you know, if you hear something, you have, you have the right just as a part of human decency to be like, hey, that's not okay to say. And, you know, I hope that my student athletes have the strength and, and they or they gain the strength being here just to stand up and say, hey, like, you know, you can't say those words. You know, you can't say those things because that could make someone feel, you know, completely outcast. And, and maybe they're going through something that, you know, you are not aware of. And so we have to have the strength to be able to stand up and say, like, hey, these conversations need to happen. And as long as they're uncomfortable, you know, it seems like there's progress. And, you know, on the flip side, us being part of the queer community, we have to be able to be like, hey, it's okay. Like, yeah, granted, not everything's okay, but we have to understand, you know, part of growth is forgiveness. And so we have to be able to understand, like, okay, this person made a mistake, and we have to try to see the good in the fact that, you know, they maybe weren't intentionally trying to make me feel terrible about who I am as a person. Um, they may just not know any better. And so, you know, I, make, I think now with all the education and developments and programs and bringing light to this, you know, we should be moving in a better place where people feel more accepted. What advice would you give to uh, someone exploring their sexuality and they may not have the support group that we've been discussing here? You know, they're they're sort of maybe having these conversations, but they're having them by themselves um, in their heads because they don't have somebody that they confide in. What, what advice would you give to somebody that may be in that situation? I would say if you can't find somebody that would be your safe space, you know, and just in somebody that you can trust that is not going to be judgmental and, you know, just try to listen to you and help you work through that. If you if you don't have that resource, I would say just, you know, reaching out to LGBTQA support groups um, and trying to just connect with somebody who is also going through this because there are millions of people who will struggle with um, their identity and, and their sexual identity and so being able to understand that there are more people out there like you. There are more people that are going through this every day. There are people that have, you know, this internal struggle and it can feel very isolating and that, you know, just to understand that you are not alone. There's, you know, millions of people that are going through the same thing. You just have to have the courage to reach out and say, hey, I need some help or, you know, can we talk? Yeah. And, and I think along that, um, you know, even if you don't identify with part of the LGBTQ plus community, um, how we said before, just be a good human being, you know, um, and, and, and be a supportive friend, uh, family member, whatever it is, and, you know, create that safe space for people to come to you for help, um, you know, because that seems to be a big problem where uh, people just aren't supported or, or, or don't have the confidence to, to reach out for help. So, you know, being a good human being and, and being able to be that friend that, you know, somebody could come to you and not feel judged and, and feel accepted. So just remember to be a good human being at the end of the day and, and just love everybody. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Simply like. Here is like a great example of like, why it's so cool to be a part of the UMass Boston community because there are so many different groups of people who are all working towards gaining strength and, and feeling like they're accepted. And so for me, being a queer person at UMass Boston, I feel like, you know, I'm supported in every way possible. Um, and I feel like, you know, encouraging people to be themselves and encouraging people to accept who they are and embrace their differences and say, yeah, this is a part of me. This is the fabric of what makes who I am. 
um, I feel like that is a really great thing to be here and to be able to, you know, constantly see that support, you know, when you're walking through campus and seeing different people and, um, you know, and, and understanding that there's, there's growth happening here. Well, you, hear, you heard it here first. Growth happening here on campus at UMass Boston. Uh, happy Pride Month to everybody. And I just want to say thank you, Coach Staggs, for sitting down with us and talking with us. And peace out, Beaconville. Happy Pride! Yay! Watch women's sports.